I'ma make it, got no time to be wasted. I got work to do. Do it up, I'ma make it. Are you digging this hate? Watch me make it through. Do it up, I'ma make it, got no time to be wasted. I got work to do. Do it up, I'ma make it. Are you digging this is hate? Watch me make it through. What's good, everybody? It's your boy James J, and you are now watching your favorite podcast. Talking shit about shit. The podcast where we have fun, get lit, and thank God while we doing it, man. Well, we got somebody special in the building today. God damn right. Say the boy Slim in this bitch. Yeah, I'm gonna introduce you, but you it's gotta do yeah, it. <laughs> hey, but you heard we got City Boy Slim in the building, man. How you doing, bro? Man, I'm doing good. I'm doing great, man. <laughs> shit. I can't complain at yeah. all. At all, at all. Shoot, boy. Man, we're like, what you been up to so far, man? Because, like, man, we ain't seen each other in a minute. Yeah, it has been a little minute, sure. Between just working and just writing. Right. What, getting this next project put together called Songs of a City Boy. Okay. So that way I can go ahead and get that project put together. And when this COVID shit clear up and they let everybody come back with the performance shit, yeah. come back out and get back yeah. to it. They is throwing niggas off with this motherfucker. I'm like, jeez, no performances at all? None, like this yeah. shit, this shit crazy, bro. Like this shit literally came out of fucking left field. Mm-hmm. Like, but I, I bet you, probably after November, you yeah. probably gonna hear shit about it, bro. It's a political move for somebody. Yeah, <laughs> for somebody. We just gonna get the quote, somebody. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, what side <laughs> of the gate is for, but it's for one or the other. It's on one of them sides of the gate. They need, they need that. <laughs> for real. Oh man, all right, man, shoot. Usually, like we usually go with, go ahead and go into my favorite segment. It's called the drink of the week. Usually, I have something made for my dog. He brought some. He brought something special. His damn self. I can't even. You man, know. Look, man. Shoot, he look, brought. Man. You got to you got to pull up, man. You got to pull up. Boy, he ain't seen that yet, man. We're going, going back in the past <laughs> on the rim brand. He, he beat me to the. He beat me to the punch, <laughs> man. That is, man. Yeah. It's been a little minute since I've seen yeah. the dog, so. It's only right that I come hey, through man. and post something up, man. <laughs> we finna talk some shit about some shit about yep, a lot of about shit. About a whole, whole lot of shit. <laughs> a whole lot of lot. Goddamn right. Yeah, goddamn. All right, bro. You ready? It's gonna be top up, then we hit you. Oh, you know. All the way to the top. Mm-hmm. Yes, Lord. Ah. Ooh. Gotta roll your shoulders with that. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Shoot, you had to hit him one time. I mean, a couple more times, but right now we're going to go ahead and get into our next segment. This segment is all about you. It's called the Guest Spotlight. All right. It's basically a segment where we just look, look into your, you know, how you do your thing and, you know, your state your, your mind, state of mind on the state of hip-hop. Okay. So, What has been the biggest obstacle you've had to overcome with your music? Self-confidence and self-belief. Yeah. Because you... you you write so so many songs, you know. I write so many songs to where it's like my mindset on the song and the direction I want to take the song in. Yeah. Is it are my listeners and my audience are they going to interpret what it is that I'm saying and the direct understand the direction that I'm going with this song, what the message is behind the song? Because you got a lot of music that's out now that's just. I don't even know if they said to call it music because yeah. they really ain't got no no message or nothing yeah. behind it. It's no message, just, no feeling, no nothing. Ain't got no kind of rap, um, rhyme with it or anything, yeah. you know, even the wordplay. So it's just like just really making sure that my confidence within myself, within yeah. my music, which will allow me to know that my listeners and followers are going to understand where I'm going with my music. Okay. Like that. That's that's the way you, that's the way you start an interview right there. Like all the way. <laughs> Man, all right. Second question. What do you hate and or enjoy about being in this business? The thing that I I hate, I, I don't even know if I would say hate, I would say a strong dislike yeah. is the the way how music has caused the rift in between people. Yeah. You know? You looking at before music, before it even had words really put a lyrical content put to it. Yeah. It was all about the beef and another beat. Yeah. At that point, 
It ain't matter where you came from or who you were or how you were. Yeah. Because we were for A to B feel good to both of us. And so everybody we, we rocking just, to it, so we just rocking and jamming. But then when you start putting lyrical content to it and people are listening to what you're saying, and if you if it's not you saying something that they can understand, yeah. something that they can relate to, it draws it draws a rift between the human beings. Yeah. Never mind the color of your skin, don't change the fact that we all are human beings. Yeah. So yeah. that that's one thing that I strongly dislike about it. Yeah. Now what I love about it is the fact that it's art. Yeah. And it's it, it allows us a person to express they self from whether what they're going through, something that they just accomplished, something that they felt that, something that hurt them, it, it really allows you to express yourself and there's always somebody in the world that's gonna be able to relate to what you're going through because you ain't the only one going, going through, through it. it. Mm. Hey, well that's real, man. All the way. I love that. Because a lot of people don't understand like certain like certain things people ain't gonna understand because they ain't come from your same background, your same like mm -hmm. living situation, whatever you wanna call it. They haven't come from that, so they can't so they can never understand that. But one thing I love about music is that certain like certain people they do understand and they do have a feeling of what you're going through. Even though they might not go through the exact that same thing. thing yep. They going through a, a lot of the of the similar things that you're going through, so it's amazing, man. And I love and I love that. that was, that's a good way to answer that question. Yes, uh, All right, question number three. Where did you get your name from? Like, what what said like, okay, this was my name. The neighborhood I grew up in here in Broward County is called Sunland Park. Yeah. AKA the city. Oh. AKA the city. So growing up, round up. I, might, I grew up in the city. Yeah. All I know is concrete buildings. I don't know what it is to be chopping down trees. Yeah. And, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, just growing up in the city. Then, I've been slim all my life. Right. So, city boy slim. It just, it just fit me. Up it just, yeah. <laughs> plus it's just catchy. Hey, city boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, city boy, yo. What's up? <laughs> Now that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, I love this question because it can it can either start us off on a on a good tangent or can have people in the comments like, "What are you talking about?" Right. That's why I, lo I love this question. Man. All right, where's the state of hip hop culture? Not just music, not just dance, not just a style. The whole culture, in your mind, is hip hop dead or alive to you? Hmm. Looking at from hip hop, what I grew up on, yeah. versus what I see hip hop is at now, yeah. everything goes through through a phase, so to speak. So you have things that it started off so powerful, and eventually it loses spark, and then it sometimes it, it catch that second flame or it catch that second wind. You know what I mean? Just like running track, you know, or running a long distance, you gonna run for for so long at a good pace before you start to die down. Yeah. And then when you see that finish line come out, you like, you pick it back I, up. I can go. Now I'm ready to go some more. Yeah. You know, so I think the whole culture as a whole, it, it when it started off, it was great. Then it, it died down a little bit because you're looking at, not to take anything away from Pac and Biggie, who they were as artists and as people, yeah. but during their time period, the industry understood beef. Yeah. So at that point, they were no longer using your music. If your music gonna make this club jump or this whole crowd of people feel mm -hmm. like dancing and grooving, it's no longer about that. Now we gotta have East versus West, have Red versus Blue, mm -hmm. Pop versus Biggie. So at that point, it it, it drew it away. Yeah. But now you basically um, built the vision. Right. But then when you had your Kendrick Lamar's and your Nipsey Hustles that yeah. come along and they bring it back, yeah. You know, so now I would say that at one point it ain't. I would, it, it's never gonna die. It's yeah. never dead. People have to understand, hip hop ain't dead. It just lost its little spark. But now with this, with the new generation coming up, hip hop for the generation that's now, yeah. it is alive. Mm -hmm. So I'll say, hip hop ain't never dead. It's always alive. Yeah, that's what's up. Man. The that's culture what's up. itself, is, yeah. it's, it's grown. Even when you tie tie the culture into what's going on now. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of artists that's now making more empowerment music yeah. because of what's going on. Because 
at some point within anything and everything, it has to have a change. You know? Whether we the people going to call for it or the universe itself is going to make a change, it's always going to be a change that has to be adapted to. So that's where I stand at on the whole culture as a whole. That's what's up, man. That's what's up. No, because even when you bring you bring up that point about you know like um like the way you, the way you were saying like about um like how the culture is affected like even it even affects politics. Mm -hmm. But you see when Obama was running, who who who, did, who um Jay Z said called him Obama. Oh, yeah. He was like, yo, like you know, I'm I'm gonna need you for this one. You know, I'm trying to you know I'm trying to get the people on board. Like, and it's crazy to think about a nigga that was just saying some words on the beat. Can now be called by a person potentially about to be the president of the United right. States. Just to help influence, mm -hmm. because he understand at that point, this is something that the people have been longing for. Yeah, like we as blacks, like Pop said in his music, that he, he would never see a black president, mm -hmm. which he didn't because he he was murdered. Yeah. But all in all, to turn around and have uh, a strong, influential rapper of Pop. Not be able to like to voice his opinion on, oh, we ain't never gonna see a black president. Mm -hmm. Then for Jay Z to turn around and be one of the leading artists, black artists, in, amongst the industry, and you have a black president turn around and call you. At that point, that that is a power move for the people, for we the people to know, yeah. like, hey, there is possibility. Yeah. Because as long as you know something is possible, yeah. then you can accomplish it. It can be done. It's when motherfuckers say, "Nah, you can't do that," or "Nah, that's impossible." Yeah, you speak, you speaking, you speaking death into the situation. You speaking, like you speaking, you cutting off the situation where where it could actually go forward. Yep. Like as long as you believe something can happen, like I like I believe in manifestation. Like you know, and be Simone talked about that. But you know, that's it's real. Off of understanding everything, it starts from a thought mm -hmm. before it manifests into a physical being. Right. They say God built the world in seven days. Yeah. He had to think about how he wanted earth to be yeah. before it manifested into physical. Yeah. Somebody had to think what kind of label I want to yeah. be on this design of bottle. So everything starts from a mental process and manifests into greatness. Yeah. So at that point, it's not believing. Yeah. It's knowing. Yeah. So and that's like I tell my girl, like, nah, love, you you can't believe it. You gotta know it. Yeah. And once you know it, then that's when that energy of bringing and so forth of what you're drawing to you yeah. comes to you. Because it's so, it's, you know how long I actually thought about doing this show? Like, this show is a perfect example, my dude. <laughs> like, I really didn't, I, like, at first I really didn't believe, I'm like, man, I can't do it. I can't, da, da, da. I'm, I'm putting myself down to a point. It took, it took me really being like, man, I can do this. It took me writing a vision and making it plain, man. Like, actually putting it down on paper. Looking at it, saying, man, like, I See, can't do this. And that, that's, that, that's where I had I had came with, with, with my music and me doing, you know, starting to perform. Because when I started off, I had, I had a partner, me and him. We, it was, like, me managing him, yeah. building a label around him being, like, the main artist. You yeah. know, like, pretty much like how all of them have done, you know, starting from the ground up. And... From a kid, I've always had headphones on. I always had music around me being introduced to different genres of music to understand that music is greater than just hip hop. Yeah. You know, so when you look at, you can look at hip hop within the musical culture, but when you look at music at, for its full entirety, look at all the different kinds of songs and music that they have that, that actually has film into it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And it's just, I had to reach to the point where I was like, let me try this. And that's how when I came up with Set the Stage. Yep. And off of that, it was like, okay. Even the first time when I performed in Miami Live, I was like, no, nah, I'm going to show you how to get paid. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I, I was nervous, yeah. you know? And then you turn yeah, around yeah. and like, you. You see so many movies and see so many of the pros and the greats that have get ready to perform and they turn around and they smoking or doing doing they choice you know they truck they choice of drug yeah you know so you feel like you got to do the same thing too you know but that's when I learned like hey just because you see the greats do it don't necessarily mean yeah, you, you gotta need to do anything it. you know what they're trying to do man and at that point 
right. When it's like, okay, next performance, I'm going to tone this down. I'm going to hold yeah. back on that. I'm going to do a little bit more of this. Mm -hmm. And just continue been growing with it. That was up. That was up, man. All right. Last question. What era would you place your music in? Like, if you've seen it, if, if, like, just any era of, you know, music where you was like, okay, if I, if I was to be, like, in this time, I know my music would, like, just tell, just I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say it like, I'm gonna answer it like this. My mind frame on on my music is coming with like a '70s mind frame, but an '80s deliverance. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because yeah. a lot of your artists that were starting to pop or they were practicing in the '80s, they finally blew in the '90s. Yeah. You know, so. My mindset is like, okay, I'm rapping or writing my music as if I was with KRS-One or Run DMC, you know. And but I'm living my deliverance is coming to what's living right here in front of me, because I wasn't living back then, yeah. you know. So I don't, I can't really say, oh, this is what they were doing back then, or this is how it was back then, because I really wasn't there. Even though you have video and you have books and you have people that tell you about how it was back then. So my mindset is in the 80s, but my deliverance is more late 80s, early 90s. But music act to me actually was like saying something. Yeah. All right. We're going to go into this next segment. And it's called, Nick. Real, real talk, like, you know, you ever, you ever just see those things, just whether it's on the news or just on social media, where you just like, uh, Nick, like, what, what, you, what are you doing? Hell yeah, I see a lot of that. Yeah. Day, day to day, man, like, I be at work, or yeah. even on my way to work, and it's just some, some of the things that I see, man, it, it, it really make me question, like, like, hold on, is my mindset fucked up, man? <laughs> <laughs> Am I doing something wrong, or, yeah. are they, or are they really, like, like, goofed out or something, man? Like, hold on, man, like, really? What? Why would you do that? To even like, what are you feeling? Yeah, what are you thinking to make you do some dumb shit like that? Like, like, whoa, man! Like, and it's whoa. really, it's really like that, man. Today, topic we gonna talk about uh, someone who is I feel a musical genius, bro. This man can literally go from hip hop to gospel and make and just. Be amazing either way. Kanye West. And before you get before you get mad at him, I'm still gonna say yeah. I, <laughs> I still listen to I don't listen to his newest stuff, I, I still listen to his older stuff. You know, I still I love Kanye, man. Like, well the old Kanye. I love the old Kanye because when he especially when he came out with Jesus Walks, it was like, bro, like that was like one of my favorite songs of all time. That still is one of my favorite songs of all time. But with everything he's going through, saying like, okay, he's dealing with mental health issues, like, a lot of times it comes out right when he's either about to drop an album or about to drop, like, a shoe or something with dealing with, like, mm -hmm. his, well, like, that his brand. Yeah. So it's like, do you think it's more of a ploy or is it like, you know, is it really something that he's dealing with? Looking at looking at Kanye, cause mind you, Kanye was in the game way before he came with Jesus Walk. Yeah, that's what a lot of people fail to realize. So you still gotta give that man his respect. Yeah, cause he is a musical genius. Yep. Seriously, like hands down, he is a musical genius. Yeah. And when you look at, I guess we could say conspiracies or the Illuminati or whatever. You know what I mean? Like. If we get into that, I would say on one side of the fence, Kanye has, Kanye, the Kanye we seeing right now ain't the same Kanye that came out with Jesus Walk. Yeah. Meaning, yeah. Me, they, they done swapped out or something. Yeah. You know, and when we see him act out right now, because really to, let, let, let's be for real, you got a Kardashian, bruh. Mm -hmm. Kanye ain't the best looking nigga in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Kanye ain't got all the money in the world. He got, so, he, he, he got a good amount he, now. He, 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 got a, he got a great amount. He just hit billion status now. You gotta but get my to thing it. is this. You have other dudes that done had billions way before Kanye got there. Yeah. 
nice looking dudes. Like when you're really looking for, you know, black dudes, even amongst the white. Yep. You know, let's not get into color. But let's just say there's some nice looking dudes that's in that realm that Kim Kardashian could have been snatched. Yeah. I mean, hell, but anybody that get with a Kardashian, bruh, they just don't come out right, bruh. Don't see him come out. <laughs> oh, I oh mean, yeah. Reggie Bush got to get him out of here. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Jeremiah Oh, yeah. Like, Jeremiah Oh, like, yeah. it's just. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, but say, ah. <laughs> no, I'm wrong for that. Lamar, Lamar, you still a good dude, but you know. But, I mean, it's, 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 all, it's all love, but it, it's just having an understanding when you really look at people, you know, you have things that do affect people on, on a larger scale to where some people really just fucking break. Yeah. You know, so to an extent, it's like I would say Kanye is still Kanye. Yeah. You know, but he just broke. Like something, something mentally in him is, is it within either his mindset or his spirit. Something is just broke yeah. to where it's so easy for the ones that control the media yeah. to make us the viewers say, "Yeah, this man is out of his fucking mind." Yeah. Yeah. Because nobody ever, nobody. Ever, how can you really come up with a, I guess, a psychological or actual visual of saying, "Oh, this person is crazy." Yeah. We really can't study the brain, so we can't truly see so it. So all the time, actions. when 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 you turn around and you have these people that are going to psychiatrists and shit like that, who's to really say that this person man on their couch is really crazy? Mm. It's just the whole thing of what we've been taught to say that's crazy, mm. because it don't make sense to us. Yeah. Because you got some, I don't met some people that are really fucking geniuses. Mm. But because you can't understand where they coming from, oh man, that nigga crazy, man. Yeah. He don't know what the hell he talking about, but really, he making some logical sense. Like one day, because mind you, you know, I do construction. Yeah. I was on one job site one day, and the little dude came to me, he looked at me, he said, you halfway in the grave. You the only one that's halfway in your grave right now. And I'm like, oh man, you crazy, man. He talking some bullshit, man. He must be on, on dope or something. Yeah. But when I turn around and I look at everybody, everybody else standing above ground, and I was halfway in the trench. Yeah. So technically, I'm halfway in a grave. You see what I'm saying? But I can't say he's crazy, because when I looked around, I understood where he was coming from. Yeah. And it was all white men that were standing around me. I was the only nigga in that trench. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you can't really judge a person and say, oh, this is crazy or that's crazy, because you're taught to say, this is crazy or that's crazy. Yeah. Hell, who to say we re- who's to really say that we black? That's but we only say <laughs> we we only say we're black or that's the color this is the color gray or this is the color red because we're taught that. Yeah. So when when you start to be taught something, really you're being persuaded or influenced yeah. to believe that this is what it is. Okay. Having people look at the sky and they say, oh, the sky is blue. Yeah, the sky is blue, but why do we see that the sky is blue? When really the sky is black. Hence nighttime. Mm. If it was blue, we'd be fucking walking out at nighttime. we still see blue. But it's only blue because of the reflection of the water. Mm. Yeah, so yeah. we say we got blue skies. <laughs> 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 that was <laughs> That was good. That was good. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, because that, that, that really leads people to like really start thinking, man. Like, shit, like, has, has what I've been taught, like, really true? Like, even like what we was learning in school, bro. Like, they was teaching us, oh, the pilgrims and the Indians, they had they had um dinner together, and that's why we celebrate Thanksgiving. Nah, no, we celebrating even, a massacre, even, my nigga. Exactly. We are celebrating a see, full we, massacre. See, we taught to sit down and have a full meal. Mm-hmm. But we ain't like that. No, we don't really have too many Indian friends, like yeah. full thoroughbred Indian friends. And that's because oh, they sorry, got sorry, hold up, hold up. We can't say Indian. Native well, American. Native, Native American. American. No, sorry, I do I apologize. Gotta say that. No disrespect. But we can't really say that we have a thoroughbred one of them as our friend. Mm. Because we ain't growing up with them. Yeah. So because they out on the Indian reservations, which are split. Mm-hmm. Again, that goes that, that, go that separation amongst human beings. Yeah. Never mind race or ethnicity, just 
fact that we all human beings yeah. under the same sun, under the same moon, yeah. same stars. So when you turn around and you just gotta ask yourself, like, damn, I'm over here eating on a turkey. Are they really over there eating on a turkey? And if they not, why? Why? Yeah. You always gotta ask yourself the greater question, and any question that you can ask pertaining to anything is why. But you gotta do your own research. You gotta do your research and really study it. Into know it. You see what I'm saying? Like I tell my daughter, when I ask her, what you learned in school today? And she tell me, oh, I learned this, 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 and that. I say, okay, that's great. Yeah. How much of your own research have you done into that? Don't just take what you're learning in school to be, oh, this is, yeah, this this is correct. Because yeah. half of your teachers nowadays, they going through the drive through straight through college. Mm. So they really ain't, ain't really up, obtaining the knowledge to really say, this is what it really is. Yeah. Plus, dealing with, with a school, you only got so much time to really cram something into a person's yeah. mental. Which that's why I feel like a lot of schools doing now, like, they studying for tests instead of study instead of studying for what's coming in life. Yeah, a lot of shit we learn in school. Do we be be honest? I'm asking the studio audience. Do you remember half the shit you learn in that damn classroom? Not no. a damn thing, man. <laughs> I feel you. Hey, I feel <laughs> stupid when my dick bring me the homework and uh, yeah. I go ask your mama, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's real. It's real, man. Cause it's like we. We go into these classrooms, and I just, I just want us to like be able to come out with something that we gonna hold on to for the rest of our lives, and not just some, something. Something with some substance. Yeah. A lot of times, I feel like we don't. We come out with, okay, you can read, you can write, like you can, you can do basic math, like that should, that should be taught. But a lot of things that they teach us, like even with, like, I don't even want to go into all of it. But I'm just saying, like, a lot of things they teach us, like even in science class, uh, just certain things that just don't need, aren't necessary, bro. They are necessary to our being and our moving forward in life. And it's like, I don't know, it's, it's crazy. But you know, with that, that's, that, that's having an understanding, too, in the same point of, as a kid, you don't know, like I was telling my daughter today, you want to decide or figure out what it is right now as a kid, yeah. what you want to do. You don't want to get older and be figuring out, oh, you want to be a rocket science. No, because at that point, you ain't really got enough time to go back yeah. and learn all that information that you need to learn yep. to be able to be a rocket science. You need to decide now. Yeah. So when you start understanding or as a parent start more than your kid to send them in a certain direction of career yeah. or life-wise, then when they go to school and they turn around and they got these six, seven categories, different classes that they got to go to, yeah. then it's, okay, I need to pay more attention into this one. I need to pay more attention into this one. Yeah. Because these are the tools. They gonna teach me the tools that I need to get where I need to be. Yeah. But that's one thing as parents that we don't ever tell our kids, like, hey, all the, the majority of that shit is bullshit. But you need to pay attention so you can take what you need. Mm -hmm. So you have the tools that you need yeah. to be able to get to where you're trying to go in life. Majority of it is going to be bullshit, but you got to be smart enough, and that's why I tell my daughter, do your own research after this has been introduced to you. Because really, that's in school. That's the only thing they really got enough time to do is introduce yeah. it to you. Because yeah. it really takes kids, time to really teach somebody something the, um, solid, you know what I mean? When it comes down to schools nowadays, everything is drive through. Mm -hmm. we, you, Get to the main boy, yeah, let me get a number three, let me get a number four. You want to know what y'all want? Yeah. <laughs> well, we're going to go ahead and go into the next segment, the last segment of the show. And it's called Testimony Time. It's a time where we thank God for bringing us through a situation that we really thought we couldn't make it through. Or that just really had us back from that point. Like, I done told my story and everything, everybody that heard my story. But do you have a story that you can tell the people that might inspire somebody to keep on going? A lot of the time when when people meet me, I guess like the number one thing you can ask anybody when they meet me, they always say I'm smiling. Yeah. And I'm like, man, why 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 you smile so much, you know? Yeah. And my whole thing is when I was born, I was born premature, my lungs were undeveloped. So I was hooked up to machines and all kind of shit, you see what I'm saying? Like before I actually even came home. 
even when I came home, I still had my complications, you see what I'm saying, from toddler all the way up to elementary school. But the thing is, tomorrow is not promised to anybody. Yeah. And you, they say, God, the thing that separated us from angels is the fact that we have free will. So at that point, every morning you get to wake up, you got something to smile about right there. Yeah. Cause you just had a little girl or a little boy that was fighting for their life or wanted to live life. Yeah. And you sitting here like, man, what the fuck? Like, I, yeah. oh, I'm feeling it. Come on, man. You gotta, just, every day you just got to keep pushing or find a way to deal with your situation. It ain't nothing that ain't placed in front of you that a solution can't be found for. Yeah. That's just my message right there, man, all the way. Man, man, that's what's up. That's what's up, man. And when, and we always in in that segment saying God is real all the way. Mm. All right, man. That was another episode of talking shit about shit, bro. I thank you for coming on. And I appreciate boy. you for having hey, man, me, man. It's all good. But before you go, make sure you run down all the social media, everything. I don't care if it's TikTok, Thread. Man, I'm, I'm just saying like this all on my shirt. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> City Boy Slim 85, Mr. Set the Stage. Florida Aces NT through Facebook, Instagram. Hell, just Google me. You're going to find me all the way. <laughs> man, amen, man. Like I always say, we welcomed you to the shit show. Now time for your ass to go. <laughs> we all the way. <laughs>